had an in, had an interesting comment that I was reading and replying to, and I thought, you know, it'd be a great topic for a video. So I'm going to go over what uh, mods to make on your 1600. So let's say you want to build a really reliable stock 1600 engine and you want something that's just going to be pretty bulletproof for a daily driver. Um, and I'm going to give you two options on that. I would say 1600 is great, um, but you can also go to a 1776 and still be really good. Or you can go to a better yet a 74 millimeter crank or 70, 76 millimeter crank and a uh, B pistons uh, 90 and a half. I'm not sure what size that is, but that actually is a really good combination. But let's just back up for a second. So 1600, what are probably the best parts to put in? Um, I, I'm really confident on the AA pistons, um, even though they're made in China. Um, I've had really good luck with those. I've had um, some of the Molly ones I've actually had uh, seen cracks in them. So, you know, the A pistons have been pretty good. Um, and, and I'm not going to say the Molly ones are bad. Um, I just had a few, you know, for the extra money, I, don't, I wouldn't spend it on the pistons. Um, I'd spend it somewhere else. Uh, the I would actually use that money to buy the upgraded uh, open con, open chamber combustion chamber heads from AA. So they I would reuse that before I would buy the uh, Molly pistons. So here's what I would do: I would go with the AA pistons um, for six for sixteen hundred. I would put in the. Uh, if you can find Kloben Schmidt rod bearings, at least, I would run those. Um, I would get Kloben Schmidt main bearings if they're available. Spend a little bit extra money for that. Um, if you can find them in your rights in your size that you need, you know, after you've machined your case. Um, then I would put on the. They have the the uh, big valve heads, even though you know you're only still running a 1600. You can never hurt with more air going through your heads. Um, if you're doing a dual port, especially, um, do the dual port. They have the 1600, um, or they have the uh, they have the pretty inexpensive upgraded. Um, heads from AA that have more meat around the spark plug holes and they I don't know the part numbers of them but they also have bigger valves in them and uh, I would put those in on as well and I would put on the uh, because you know you're talking about an extra maybe 200 bucks or something like that to put those heads on put brand new heads on versus having your old ones machined and try and find a good set um, so I would do that and I mean myself I've just always had extra parts laying around but if I had to buy you know and I've done my own head work and stuff like that but if I had to have them done I would just probably get the AA ones and you're going to have to also get those machined in CC just so you know they're not going to be bolt on you're going to have to do that to them. Um, and the other thing I would do is I would definitely um, upgrade the cam to an angle, maybe uh, equivalent. I usually use angle because everybody knows who they are, but um, 110 or 100 cam um, in, in that engine. And uh, the reason I would do that is because it actually helps out your advanced curve for cruise speed. So it makes your in, you can make your engine run a little bit cooler if you're running a higher RPM on the freeway because the actual cam curve on the original stock cams kind of topped out, you know, probably like 3,500 RPMs. And a lot of us are driving faster than that on the freeway. So, you know, it just might be better to go ahead and, and upgrade the cam as well. Uh, the lifters, I would never put in empty lifters ever in my life um, unless you want to have a huge problem not to take it all apart 
Um, the only lifters I use are either SCAT or German reground. Usually I go with German reground. So, or I, and I think some of the, I, I'm not sure if the other cam manufacturers that, that I think webcam or somebody makes some decent ones, but I'm not a hundred percent positive on that. I know that SCAT does. So, um, I don't know if I've covered everything. Case. Uh, the stock cases, as long as you have a dual relief case, are usually okay for 1600, even if 1776. But anything larger than that, um, I'm really not like liking going to the smaller studs and you know, and and then when you're opening up your case for like 94s, uh, you know, I'm not a real big fan of going anything other than aluminum. Because the aluminum has better bought volumetric efficiency, the uh, uh, you know it, it's a little heavier, but you know it also is stronger. I mean, shoot, they put them in port. Aluminum cases are in Porsches. Aluminum cases are in are in uh, the late model vans. I mean, and they are proven to last longer. So um, I would, if I'm going to go any bigger than that, I would always go with an aluminum case. So. A lot of guys just go with 90, 90 94s and, and put a, 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 a stock magnesium case. And I just don't like to have the studs being that close to the uh, to the opening. It just to me, it's just it's a disaster waiting to happen. Um, not that it always happens. You know, a lot of times it works fine. But I would I just don't like that. I'd rather do it the stronger way. So that's one option if you're going to go 1600. Um, if you're still looking for bulletproof, uh, the crankshaft, typically, if you're going to go for bulletproof, then you can go with the uh, forged uh, steel. Do not put in the cast one. It's a waste. If you're going to put a cast one in, just go with the stock crank. On a 1600, you can use a stock crank. They work fine. But um, if you want it to last a little bit longer, go with the counterweighted uh, forged steel. But now this is where I kind of draw the line as I go look. If you're going to go with a counterweighted forged steel crank, all right? If you're going to go with a counterweighted forged steel crank, why not go to a 76? Now you've only got to do a little bit of machine work. You can still run the same case. You got to do just a little bit of clearancing in the case to get the crankshaft to clear. It's a very small amount of work to do to the case. You're not going to compromise the case much. Um, and then you run a 76 and if you're going to go with the 76, then you go with the nine and a half pistons. So then you'll get quite a bit more torque out of your engine. And so, and you'll still be seriously in the reliable zone. So that's kind of where I go. You can still go with the stock carburetor. A lot of people say, oh, well, if you do all that, you're going to have to go with dual carbs. No, no, you don't have to. You can still run a stock 30 you know, 34, you know, and, and it'll actually really run strong. It's just as long as you jet the carb, right? So a lot of people tell you, Oh no, you got to do go with dual carbs. If you're going to go that big of a motor and all this stuff, no, you're just going for reliability and torque. And you're going to have a lot of power with the stock carb. I mean, back in the old days, my cousin had a, a seven, uh, a, an 1835 in his bug and, we ran that thing, we ran that sucker straight into the ground and, uh, and it was fine. It always had a stock carb on it. It never had dual carbs and it was really torquey and it ran really nice. So, you know, you don't have to put that dual carb set up on there. Uh, if you want reliability, you don't want dual carbs because dual carbs are constantly going to be out of adjustment. You're always going to have problems. Um, the thing you can do is some guys with the old Zenith two barrel, um, I'm not really uppity on those. Um, they're pretty old. Um, and they do have dual Venturi, so you you're still have the same issues you have with um, dual carbs because you've got one side that can be a little bit out of adjustment from the other. And, uh, you know, they work okay. They actually work pretty good. Um, I, I'm actually, uh, I like if you can find a good one and you can get it jetted right and you get it to work good. I, I really like the Holly Weber carbs. You end up with a little bit of a dead spot between the primary and secondary, but um, that can be, you know, a good upgrade if you're going to go with a, you know, more carburation on that engine. So 
and that'll get you a really really reliable car you have a you know electric choke and all that other stuff and you know it fires right up in the morning you're not sitting there going whoa, 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 you know trying to run the carbs and you know dual carbs and hitting it and it's all poppy and everything in the morning you know that's you know if you don't want to deal with all that then way to go on the outside of the engine i would like i i don't i really like the electronic ignition you now when you do the electronic ignition on like this one here even the mp ones aren't too bad the new mp the, they had a bad run on them for a little while but I, this one hasn't been too bad um the what the deal is with those is originally the car had the uh it, it originally had a uh retarded third cylinder no, number three cylinder on the lobes on the distributor on the original engine and uh that makes that makes your old vw always idle a little bit rough and reason that they did that is because they wanted the number three not to work as hard as the rest of the other cylinders so um it's not that retarding it makes it run cooler it makes that cylinder not do as much as the other three so going to if you have it adequately cooled if you're running a doghouse fan shroud it's almost kind of a you know double and you know it's a little bit it, it's more than maybe you need um and on that especially if you're doing the doghouse fan shroud and the cool tin which guys will say you does not work but it does so if you go with the cool tin on your engine you got the you can you can run this distributor which i'm running and uh this is a you know and no it you you know i'm only running i'm not even running a doghouse on this thing and uh it doesn't run hot because i have the cool tin on there and uh i have a really oversized cam so putting the oversized cam in sometimes can bring more air through your heads more air and fuel mixture through your heads and actually make your engine run a little bit cooler so you know those things can help you know people think oh a big cam is going to make it run hotter not necessarily if you have it jetted correctly so anyway that's just a couple things on uh running a stock 1600 if you guys are going to run a stock 1600 or if you want to just do a really really super um reliable stock looking engine uh some of the things you can do you can look into to make that work out for you so i'll talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe